Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Jonathan Hamm of the Royal Retreat Lutheran Parish, St. Paul and Grace, and I also have the distinct honor of serving as Dean of the Highlands Conference. It is my joy today to present to you a sermon for Ash Wednesday. We begin with a reading of the Gospel, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, Beware of practicing your piety before others to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door. And pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation took place almost three and a half years ago now, and we marked the anniversary year through several celebrations and remembrances, as I'm sure most of you did as well. But in our parish, we now remember that year for another reason. It is the year we opened Katie's Pantry. During Vacation Bible School that summer, our youth were visited each night by Katie Luther, who regaled them with stories of how Katie took care of and fed her household that often numbered 50-plus for dinner most nights. She raised food, and she tended gardens and fish ponds and pigsties and squirreled away any money Martin Luther brought home because often he gave it away as quickly as he received it. It was Katie Luther's story of feeding and caring for her own family, plus various students and family members and others who came by that inspired us to think about the ways we were helping people in need in our community. We decided that most of the things we were doing to help were good, but not local enough and not direct enough for us. And so without much forethought or even planning, we built a food pantry in the parking lot of Grace Luther. Katie's Free Pantry stands there now, stocked at least once a day by a member of the church and just as often, if not more often, by folks in the community as well. And during the pandemic, we have been stocking it at least twice a day, asking people to take what they need and give what they can. As economic disparities and food insecurities rise, we hope our little attempt to right some of these wrongs is helping those most vulnerable in some way shape or form. Jesus stepped into an interesting time in the history of the Roman Empire and in the life of those who lived in and around Jerusalem and Judea. Throughout much of Matthew's gospel, Jesus is pictured as a great healer and restorer who responds to the intense sickness and poverty of the people he encounters on a daily basis. Jesus responds to the people who follow him because well, they are victims of severe economic and political and theological exploitation. 
In Roman times, around 2% of the population had the wealth and power, while the rest were oppressed politically and theologically and militarily. Historians suggest that it is likely that at least 10% of the poor were always on the edge of economic despair. These were the beggars, the people who were chronically sick, and the people who were physically handicapped, and those who were labeled as criminals and other things. The peace of Rome, known as Pax Romana, was only for the few, while the rest suffered or kept things in line for those who had the power. And so when Jesus steps onto the Sermon on the Mount to deliver his sermon, it is no wonder that he begins by blessing those who are hurting, those who are barely subsiding, those who are living under the difficult realm and rule of the Roman oppressors. And so following this blessing that he pronounces in the first few verses of the sermon, Jesus continues in our lesson for this Ash Wednesday, teaching that the foundation of healing and wholeness in body, mind, and spirit is found in giving and in praying and in discerning what is basic and beneficial for our lives. In the midst of this passage, Jesus wisely counsels and encourages us to put some distance between our faith practices and our awareness of them. Do not let your left hand know what the right hand is doing. And when you go into your room, pray quietly in a closet to the God who will hear you. And finally, do not look like the hypocrites, for they love to stand in the street corners and proclaim all that they are doing. Because we are set free to live in this way. Jesus calls us, Jesus challenges us, Jesus begs us to live as the baptized people and children of God who live for love of God and neighbor. These three disciplines of Lent are actually lifelong calls to live in this way, to give for the well-being of others, to intensify our prayers for the world, and to determine those aspects of our lives that would benefit from self-denial. Therefore, we are set free indeed. One of the stark reminders that Ash Wednesday sets before us is the fact that None of us are getting out of this world alive. We are all sin-filled human beings who are dust, and we will return one day to dust. The ashes on our forehead, literally or figuratively this year, remind us of that truth, even as they make the form of the cross on our foreheads. It reminds us that we are children and people of God who have been baptized into Jesus' death and resurrection. That cross stands boldly on our foreheads this night, but it is always there, marking, claiming, and challenging us to be the people God in Christ has called us to be. And so this Lenten season, may we all receive that swift kick in the butt from the Holy Spirit that we all need to make our lives a lot more about others and a lot less about us. May we pray boldly for this world and the injustices we see all around us. May we lift up the lowly, the dispirited, the poor, and the hungry and feed them not only with our prayers but with our hands, reaching out with food as well. And may we give from our abundance as we have been, have been abundantly given. Many of us have probably found ourselves only slightly affected by the financial crunch this pandemic has created for so many. Our gifts of time and talent and treasure are needed as much, if not more, than ever before. And may we take a hard look at our lives, how they have changed over much of the past year, and determine how we will live moving forward. There are probably some things we cannot wait to do again. And there are likely others that no longer need to be a part of our busy lives. Where will we benefit from self-denial and decluttering of our lives? Siblings in Christ, as the called and baptized and marked and sent people of God, we are called to enter this Lenten season with open hearts and open minds and open spirits as we journey with Jesus to the cross and to the empty tomb. As we give thanks for the gifts God has given to us, may we find ways through our prayer through our giving, through our fasting, to continue to give back to God. And as we live into the promises, we remember that we are dust, 
baptized and forgiven dust. Dust that has been set free to live into this world, seeking to love God and neighbor as people who give what we can so others may have what they need. This is the world Jesus envisions on the Sermon on the Mount. And as we see this unfold in our lives and in our communities, we receive a glimpse and a foretaste of the kingdom of God, where our treasure is stored forever. Amen.